What's up, Crypto Crew, and welcome back, or if this is your first time, I'm Captain Crypto Mike, actively escaping the matrix, scoping out the crypto ocean, so if you like your odds, get on the boat, stay up to date, thumbs up, and join the hunt. Into the boat! Crypto Crew, my conviction for this bull run is in CASPA, and it's KRC20 tokens, aka the CASPA network. All that asset management, you know, diversification, that's for idiots, right? Because you... <laughs> Because you can't, you can't diversify enough to know what you're doing. In other words, walk by faith and not by sight. One of the reasons why I believe so much in CASPA is because of its decentralized, secure, and scalable nature, which effectively solves the trilemma, or in layman's terms, the only crypto project on the entire crypto ocean right now that can effectively be used as an alternative for our current failing fiat or monetary system is Caspa. And so today, Crypto Crew, we are going to take a walk, a memory lane on how we got to the financial state that we are in because of what happened in the past, specifically with the dollar and the gold standard. On August 15th, 1971, President Richard Nixon announced that the United States would be terminating the convertibility of American dollars into gold, turning the world's reserve medium of exchange into something backed by nothing but belief. Over the next five years, the price of gold, which up until that point had been the baseline store of value, more than tripled in price. Thought of another way, by this same standard, the American dollar lost more than two thirds of its value. This decision preceded two decades of record high inflation in the US, where prices are increasing by double digit percentages year on year, all while the value of the American dollar slumped in international markets. The gold standard, as it existed up until 1971, was first introduced in 1944 towards the end of World War II with the introduction of the Bretton Woods system. The Bretton Woods Agreement was a system of monetary management that was established to make financial relations between the United States and its new allies easier. It worked by having all countries in the system make their currencies exchangeable for a set amount of US dollars, and the US dollar itself would be exchangeable for a set amount of gold. This indirectly made the currencies of all of the participating nations gold-backed in their own right without requiring them to keep massive gold reserves themselves. However, American dollars themselves could not be directly converted to gold domestically. This convertibility was only available to foreign participants, not regular everyday Americans. This system worked all right, and it certainly enabled a level of global trade that was inconceivable up to that point. But of course, there were problems. Currencies sort of act like shock absorbers for international trade. If left to do their own thing, they will naturally increase and decrease in value as the economies that they represent go through periods of boom and busts. If an economy goes through a really rough patch, its currency will lose value in foreign exchange markets. This devalued currency will make the economy's exports artificially more competitive globally, which will help domestic industries. If an economy is doing really well, it means that its currency will increase in value, giving it the opportunity to invest into foreign economies, which should, in theory, help them do well too. If a currency is fixed, then this self-correcting force can't do its thing, and economies can quickly spiral out of control. The US under the Bretton Woods system was unique in that its currency was pegged both to gold, but also to a whole bunch of other currencies as well. If the US was doing well, then in a floating model, its currency should have increased in value, but in a peg system, it did not. And other countries were able to take advantage of this by stockpiling American dollars for less than they were truly worth. Now, this was a small price to pay for securing the US dollar as the global reserve, something that paid dividends far and away beyond the small cost of currency outflows. But what was less palatable was when this situation was reversed. The other Bretton Woods countries saw that the American dollar was overvalued relative to what it should be. Obviously, they wouldn't want to trade their own currencies for US dollars while it was overvalued, but they had another option. They could trade their relatively overvalued American reserves for physical gold. Most participating countries, especially the French, started trading more and more of their American dollars in for gold, which caused two big issues. The first was that it reduced America's economic influence. If people were holding gold instead of American dollars, then they lost the advantages that came along with having control over the world's default medium of exchange. 
The bigger issue though was that America simply didn't have enough gold to honour all of these transfers endlessly, and that's because there are two basic types of gold standard. The first is what you probably think of when you think of a gold standard, and that's a system where there is enough gold sitting in a vault somewhere to redeem every single last dollar floating around an economy, even if everyone decides to redeem all of their money all at once. This is often called a full reserve standard or a space standard, and these systems have existed throughout history but only in very rudimentary economies. Most modern gold standards have been fractional reserve systems where, as the name would suggest, only a fraction of the gold necessary to honour all of the outstanding dollars are kept in vaults. The theory behind such a system is that so long as people know that they can exchange their dollars for gold, they probably won't ever choose to because gold is heavy and cumbersome and hard to store effectively. Gold is about the most fungible thing in the world. It's elemental. A gram of gold is equal in value to every other gram of gold in the world. It can be melted, recast and melted again and it will still be a gram of gold. For this reason, if two nations that are both on a fixed gold standard want to trade with one another, they can do so without fear of either of their currencies being worth more or less during the process of their business. Another big advantage of the gold standard is that it prevents most types of financial repression. Financial repression, not to be confused with economic depressions, are situations where savers earn interest below the rate of inflation. There are two ways to end up in this situation. High inflation or low interest. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? The problem with severe financial repressions is that they can act as a wealth transfer from those that have saved money to those that have borrowed it. If you have your life savings in a bank account earning 3% interest, you are going to be very unhappy if the value of the dollar halves over the next five years. Your neighbour on the other hand who just took out a huge loan to buy their house would be very happy because the real value of their mortgage would have halved over the same time. The mortgage holder that just happened to benefit from high inflation and low interest rates was a lucky participant. But governments themselves can also take on debt and they are the ones with their hands on the levers to make financial repression happen. It can be very tempting for governments to inflate away their own debt to put themselves in a better financial position. This is all great, but of course the biggest benefit of the gold standard is price stability. With a currency backed, even fractionally, by gold, it makes it much harder for reckless money printing to increase purchasing power enough to materially impact prices. Casper is the only crypto project that can objectively be used as an effective currency, potentially replacing the current failing monetary or fiat system. Nicolas Sismil, current director of research at Cas Media, realized the potential of Casper when he was still working for Binance. Listen to what Nicolas says about the unique character of Casper and why it can ultimately replace money so i mean like i said previously caspa fulfills you know it's the perfect form of money so of course it's going to be a real world payment system even more so it could be a stateless world reserve currency so to create a perfect form of money money must possess three different qualities first it must be a store of value second it must function as a medium of exchange and third it must act as a unit of account the most difficult qualities for a form of money to obtain from this triangular puzzle, so to speak, are, to, are the store value and the medium of exchange part. So there's three necessary conditions for good to be a store of value. It must have unforgeable costliness. This means that it's expensive and it's difficult to forge, replicate, or produce. And secondly, there's a, there has to be a mechanism in place to restrict the ease of forgery, replication, or production. So in the case of gold and silver, this would be mining. And in the case of proof of work, this would be the difficulty adjustment in addition to mining as well. Um, also, there has to be an objective supply instead of a subjective supply, uh, thereby creating an objective unit account. Um, so money has to be hard. And its hardness is determined by its stock to flow ratio. Uh, historically, gold, silver, the gold standard, and Bitcoin have functioned like store value. Uh, but we've never actually seen a form of money. Uh, we've never seen a hard form of money that has been a good medium exchange. This is why fiat was so revolutionary, as bad of a store value as it is. It was the first form of money um, that was saleable across space, so it could handle settlement speeds that we've never seen before. 
Um, and Bitcoin tried to function like a medium exchange, but it felt short of this because it's slow, cumbersome, expensive to handle high settlement speeds that match fiat, for example. So with Casper, you have a solution to the current traditional payment system as it's as fast as fiat, but as hard as proof of work. And um, decentralized finance could finally be decentralized once smart contracts are implemented within Casper. Walk by faith and not by sight. My conviction is that Casper not only is the most valuable crypto project on the crypto ocean right now, it has all of the tools to be an alternative or maybe even replace the current failing fiat or monetary system. And at the price that it is right now, you can get cheap Caspa at low trading fees at Maxi, who partnered up with your crypto crew. Maxi invites you to an event where you can win 20,000 USDT. Click on the link in the description box below. Stick around. Fix your mind before you get to the grind. And with that said, let's continue to escape the matrix. Let's continue to be on the lookout for the next big thing here on the crypto ocean. Growing grace and let's make some crypto waves. Say I.